today's session will be on generators, um, which are basically a future, I think, um, is it in Python 3? Yeah, I think, um, I'm not sure, but it has not been um, in the previous version of Python, but um, it has been incorporated uh, lately from, I think, Python 3. So what it tries to solve is try to solve uh, the way we do, uh, uh, normal way we do iteration using for loop, right? So it tried to do some kind of abstractions related to for loop instead of doing some kind of manual way to iterate over them other stuff. And um, we'll see what will happen. So you see, we do iteration everywhere. Whenever you want to do some stuff, we do iteration. So if you look at this guy, this is a string, right? And we do iteration over the string here. If we iterate over this, we can do some stuff like printing each number, right? And we can also do iteration within a dictionary, right? We, we can say for K and B, and now we can do some stuff. We can iterate in a list and we can um, iterate in a file, right? So this is a file called foo. Um, we can iterate over it, maybe to print a line in the file, right? Um, where we often need. So we, we do a lot of um, about iterations, but behind the scene, under the horn, there is something um, happening uh, about the stuff, right? So what is happening actually is this. Um, when you try to do this kind of follow, behind the scene, this is what is happening. So whatsoever you created, for example, you say for X in object, so you create an X, um, an object, anything here, for example, here we have C equals to this list, and now when we say for I and C, then I will be the first one. That is the first follow. The second one will be two. So you are creating an object and you are iterating, right? So it means inside this follow, there is something behind the scene that actually pushing to the next value. Because when you do follow, for example, when we take this guy, what we do here, we can say, all right, um, for this guy and this, just print um, uh, print i, right? So we can say for this in this print i. Um, so oh, this is taking me. What's happening? Is your computer okay? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know what's going on. So, yeah, so. Okay, yeah. So you can see here, we said, um, um, this is a list, right? And we say for I in this C, print this. So it means there is something here, right? Inside this loop, there is something that is nudging the list so for i and c that is for the first one is i is one now it will print one now there is something now when it print it nudges yeah to the next step to the next i right so um this is what is happening behind the scene here um yeah so it when you do that it create an object and now what you will try to do while the while true that is the object you have not exhausted it, it will like try to say the iterator that is up next, give me the next, give me the next. So um, if this falls, that is you reach the last iterator, it will stop the iteration and break, no more iteration. So this is something that actually is happening when we use for loop, it really abstract what is happening behind the scene. So you can see all the objects that work with for loop implement this lo level iteration protocol. So this level, low level iteration protocol is uh, implemented in all for loop, right? Now, let's look at what is really happening. So what we just saw, um, where we print all other thing, um, if without the implementation of for loop, let's look at it mechanically, right? So I have a variable here called x, 
And now you can see, I say, all right, since I have an X, I create an object X, right? Then I will create a, 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 a Dunda, um, uh, Dunda Aita, right? Which uh, basically uh, get the iteration. So when I say this, you can see here, what I have is that I have my list here. Now here, I create an object called iterator, which is IT now here from uh, my object X. So I now create an iterator. So here is a list, but this IT now is an list iterator. So you can see it's a list iterator. So you can also have a tuple iterator. So here, I think if you have this guy, uh, let's look at it here. So if you have this guy, um, what we're going to have, yeah, you can see tuple iterator. So now we have iterator. Now, if you remember inside the loop, we just try to uh, print and when we iterate. So here we can call this next. So any um, object you can see here, we have two things, right? Um, inside the protocol, we have what you call iterator. That is to create an iterable object. So this is iterable now. Um, we use iter, uh, Dunda iter to create an iterable object. And now we use next, Dunda next. So Dunda next, um, nudge the iterable item to the next one. So here, when we call it.next, it will actually print um, this guy. Okay, let me clear this. So it will actually print this guy. Now, when we say this, it will print the first element, right? Now, if we say next, it will nudge the um, items to the next one. And now here we have two, right? Now if we can nudge it again and we can have um, three. We can nudge this guy again. Um, what we're gonna have is we are gonna have an error, right? Why? Because we have three items inside our tuffle, right? Um, we have three items. Remember the for loop implement stop, right? Inside the for loop, this protocol, it try to see whether if it is true, but here you can see where we do it manually. We actually um, try to go to the next item, we got an error. So this is basically what is happening. Um, alternatively, every Dunda method like this does have corresponding um, method like this. So here, instead of this um, Dunda next, we can use next, um, which is also the same uh, function which basically tries to get the next item, right? So we have next, you can see that. So this is basically what, so generator function are special kind of function that return a lazy iterator. Um, so what do we mean by lazy iterator? It, it lazy in the sense that um, we don't actually return every item in it, right? So for example, if I have 1 billion list, you see, one billion list of items, you store them in a list, in a single item, it will consume the memory spares, right? But a lazy iterator will only store the item from the beginning to the last, and when you call the next, it will be stored. It will only store two locations, the first location and the last item. Now, the first next will give you the first item. The second next will give you the second unless until it reaches the last one. This means that it will not hold everything in between. That is called lazy, uh, yeah. There are objects you can look over like a list, however, or like list, lazy items do not store their contents in memory. You can see that. So lazy items do not store their contents in memory. So for example, um, range is a Python function, which is lazy um, iterator. Why? Because um, if you look at this guy, range, um, we mean five items, right? But we didn't give it five items, right? So when I call, um, I can call a list on a range. I can call a list on this guy range, right? Um, yeah, so if I call a list on this guy range, what will happen is that um, you can see all my five numbers. It means this, it presents a list, right? A list now contain five items, zero, one, two, three, four, five. All these guys are stored in a memory, but a range, so only one number, right? It's to only one number, right? Five, which is um, by default range start counting by zero. Um, but if I want to say, okay, 
um, um, this um, range, I think, is it uh, how is yeah. So if I say like, um, start counting from one to right from this. Now, um, it's right. So here on I say list, um, we can see that. Uh, yeah, you can see one to four because list does not um, uh, the last item is not included. So this means that this is what we call lazy. What do they call lazy iterator? They don't actually hold everything in the list, but they only hold this first and last, right? Yeah. So that's about the lazy and the um, yeah. Anyone want to add something? Um, Isabel, tell her, you want to add something on top of this or question? <sighs> No. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, right. So let's go to the um why we sometimes we need to use some lazy iterator. By the way, um, I have not actually tried doing those exercises. Um, yeah, I just go through the um um examples and some sources I put up uh, to make the session more understandable. So, um, example one of the um um pretty um scenario that you see uh, iterate is used is really large amount of file like blood file right now a python has um, a module called csv that basically can be used to read um uh, file um some go to uh tidyverse i mean uh are actually it's really amazing like everything you don't need to do this stuff in anyway in python they also have pandas but um Whenever I want to do something in fact, I say, what? In how you just call tidyverse, it will do everything for you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, in Python, um, before you read, uh, sometimes you read a file, you need to open it, right? So here we have with open uh, this guy. Now you can see um, we open this and now we have F. So now here we want to create um, an iterator. So here you can see CSV, the reader. Um, which is actually a function under the module. This, uh, we call this F, therefore this CSV reader is an iterator. What this means is that um, we open it and now we create an object to hold that, all right? So now what this means is that if you have 1 billion items, lines, maybe in a file uh, or some stuff like that, you can read them one by one instead for you to just read them to your memory so that they can crash your computer, right? So for example, here you can see we skip the first row. So CSV, and now we for line in CSV data, put in the other line. So here you can see, this is pretty way to actually read large um, amount of file in Python you can use instead of just read them as once. So this is one scenario um, where we can use, um, uh, uh, yeah. This is also this another example where you basically um, uh, read the number of lines in a file. So here you can see we create a generator. Uh, we say CSV that this, uh, we read the file here. Uh, we can see here when we run this guy, when we said, okay, what is CSV generator here? You can see um, when we run this, yeah, you can see this is CSV reader, right? So this is a generator, this means that um, when we say CSV, the reader data set, we'll create a generator here, which basically uh, we can use to look. So or sometimes the best way to print or to go through the item the generator is to go through loop. So here, when we say for row in CSV generator, row count plus one, because here row is zero. So this will print how many row we have. So that's um, pretty, um, yeah. So supporting iteration. So um, knowing about iteration is useful if you want to add it to your own object. So we already saw how this um, is implemented, right? So this is um, uh, how uh, we can manually enter, um, uh, implement how we can look through an item, right? Um, so with this here, we can see here we, um, have an init function um, where we uh, instantiate the variable called holdings with a list here, right? And now here we have ita, um, dunder ita, which basically used to uh, create the object um, holding. So when we create an object now here, port equals to portfolio, it means here now port is now 
uh, 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 iterator object. So because here you can see here it returns safe holding iterator, right? So here it actually it returned the iterator object. So this is basically an example of how we can, which we have already seen. Now, uh, so what is generator function? Um, still we have seen some kind of um, off the shelf generator, but what is generator function? So a generator function is any function that you use what is called yield statement. So any functions that uses the yield statement is called a generator, right? So let's look at um, uh, what it is. And so here, these are some of the functions of generator and uh, different from the default function in Python, but we'll come back to it and see what will happen. So here I have a function called def my gen, right? I have n equals to one, and now I say print, this is a print line, and now I say yield n, right? So I have n here, and now I have, uh, 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 I have a keyword called yield n, right? Now, this is the first part, right? Now, the second part, remember here, I see n equals to one, but now I updated to n equals to plus one, and now this is the second one, and now I say yield n. Now I have another, my n updated and say yield n. So what happens is that let's run this guy and see what will happen. So you can see here, I printed, I have, a, um, I have three, uh lines here right Pre it print this one here and yield and print this one and yield and print this one here so let's look at what will happen now i create an object because um, this is a uh, dev now so here i create an object a using my generator function so we can see a is basically a generator right so if a is generator now let me say next a to get the item inside it so this is printed first so you can see here remember here I have how many? Um, I have how many um, lines? You can see I have this guy. It print this guy, right? And now I say yield n. But I incremented the n here again and say yield n, right? Also here. This means that there is something actually here. Why didn't this function when I create the object? When I create object here. I call next, it only print this line. Why this function? Uh, because you see inside this function, I have how many print? One, two, three, right? I have three print. Why it print only this one and stop? Didn't come here. Why? It didn't come here. It only, when it print this guy, it only stop at here, right? Now what is happening here is that generator to a function contain one or more yield statement, so yeah. So this is generator function because it contains one or more yield statement, right? Uh, when called, it returns an object iterator but does not start execution immediately. So when called, it create an object but it does not start its, uh, execution automatically. So here you can see I have a my generator. I now create an object a which is generator. Now I call it here. It just show me here. Nothing happens. It does not start automatically, right? Yeah. An iterator object does not start automatically. How does it start? Until you call uh, it on a method next or on iterator, right? So um, method like iter and next are implemented automatically. So you can see the method on, on generator functions, uh, method like that are implemented automatically. Uh, so we can iterate through the items through next. So here you can see here there is no iter or next, they are implemented automatically inside using, if you use this keyword yield, then iter and next are implemented automatically. Then this means that when I create, I call the next, I can see that. Again, when I call the next, I will see the next line. This is a printed second. Can you see this is a printed second, right? So what is happening, something is stopping this execution from next, so this is what they say. When the once the function yield, the function is paused and the control is transferred to the caller. You can see when the function yields, so the moment the function yields, come to heal, now it stop, then goes to next iteration. But here, remember, we are not doing iteration, but we are using just it's just sequential, so it will fall to the next one. It will fall to the next one. Yeah. So local variable and their state are remembered between successive calls. So you can see, yeah. This is very important. Local variables and their state are remembered between successive. So local variable here, we have n equals to one, right? Now here I have n equals to two, right? So it means 
from this step to the next step, the variable n is not destroyed, is used. So here, when I call the next one, um, it prints um, me the value two, right? So finally, when the function terminates, stop iteration it stays automatically. So you can see finally when the function step, when you access it, everything, um, the uh, next is called. So when I run this, oh, I run this guy. This is the next one when I run this guy. Yeah, so you can see this is the last one. Um, oh, I run the other ones. So uh, it will automatically call this stop iteration. So that's basically one uh, what iterator is. So one important thing to know about is that the value of I, uh, variable n is remembered between each call, right? So yeah, as we saw, or like normal functions, the local variable are not destroyed when the function yields. Furthermore, uh, the generator out there can be iterated only once. So you can see this is one of the difference between um, normal functions. Uh, when you uh, do something, then the uh, function, the variable inside are destroyed. Um, so you, we can see here, we basically go through these ways um, to do some kind of printing. So the natural way to actually iterate over uh, iterator um, or generator is to use function um, for loop. So here we can say for item in my gen, uh, print this. So item is the generator here. So it will actually print everything here. Yeah, can you see that? So instead for us to write, write that till long, so what we can do is uh, we can set item um, for item in my gen, then uh, yeah. So that's basically uh, what it is. This is because a for loop and iterator and iterate over use the next function, it automatically ends with. So you can see in the previous case, um, it actually stops, create an error when it reached the last one, right? But uh, using for loop, it does not um, crash, uh, re uh, report an error, but uh, existed um, peacefully because um, stop is uh, implemented inside the for loop. All right, any question before we continue? Um, gotta try it. <laughs> eh? Oh, it's just uh, gotta try it before, yeah. You haven't got it? No, yeah, I think so. Um, ah, okay. It's just a different like kind of thinking that I'm used to, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Right, so um, can we go come over it? No, 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 I, I think I'll continue, thank you. Okay, so maybe there is another example here, maybe. So, so basically, um, yeah, so this is another example of generator. Suppose you wanted to create your own custom iteration um, for a countdown, for example. Um, we want to create a countdown um, list of items, so um, what we can do is uh, we do what is called um, yield, using yield. So let me see it. Um, this is the function maybe, yeah. So what is happening here is this. Uh, we want to have a countdown function. Now we want it to do countdown. And now this is a print inside the function. Now while n is greater than zero, yield n. And now here we subtract this. So when we run this one here, what happens here is that yield n, which basically tries to, as we have already explained, try to keep tracks of your element. So here, this is a function for x in countdown print x and now this. So what is happening here is that as you can see here, we have yield n. This yield n, it is what makes this countdown a generator. So whenever you create an object. So here, when we say for X in countdown, so it means X is now an object that will be written here. X is an object in countdown, but inside this countdown, 
here, yield is now the form of iteration. So this is what we have already explained that uh, when you explain this thing by hand, but uh, inside the full loop is already implemented and one doesn't need to do it again. Okay, um, then there is something called producers, consumers, and pipelines. Um, let's see what that, that means. Okay, so this is, um, uh, there is what is called list comprehension, right? We all know what list comprehension is. Um, this is a list, and now we have what is called list comprehension that similar to for loop, but it's a one liner, right? So here you say for X in this return X squared, right? Now, when we have this one here, then when we call um, this, yeah, so this is list comprehension, right? List comprehension. So we have what is called generator expression as well. Generator expression. So what is the difference between generator and expression? So it's a version of list comprehension, but instead of using square bracket, can you see square bracket? It uses parentheses like this. Yeah, it uses parentheses. So as you can see here, as we create a list comprehension list and we print the list, we have a list of numbers, right? But now here, when we create this uh, for X, uh, for x in my list, return x squared, and we do this in generator. Now, when we print list here, it gave us the list, the squared, right? The squared of numbers, which are this. But here, when we call the generator, we get a generator. Can you see that? So this means that. Um, here is a give us this is basically a list right a list is give us a list it contain if you have one million items here it will store this one million items now instead of doing list comprehension python comes with this generator um expression so a generator expression is um a more efficient way to do um whether a list comprehension, whether um, um, dictionary comprehension, because it will turn a generator. So you can see this generator, if this list have 1 million number, one to up to 1 million, this generator will only store the first number one and the last number one and 1 million. Therefore, it store only two numbers. So you can see it benefit from speed and also storage. Um, right, so we can see here, um, yeah, um, let me take this one here. Ah, okay, so we can see here, uh, since this is a generator, I have a list here, I say for X in my list, return X squared, and now I have A, right? Now, this A is now a generator. Can we see A is now a generator? And the A contains squared of numbers, right? Now, let's look at it here. Now, when I say print A, it will print the first number in this square. So you can see we have one, right? It return for x in my list, return x squared. That is one squared is one. When I click this guy again, it will give me the next number. Three squared is what? Nine. When I click this guy, it will give me the six squared is what? 36. When I click this guy, it will give me the next number is um, 100. When I click it again, it will give me an error because I don't have stuff, right? So this is basically the idea of generator. Um, yeah. So we can see there are some difference here with the uh, list and uh, with the list comprehension and generator. Um, yeah. One thing also we should know is that 
once consumed can't be reused. So we can see here, um, does not construct a list. So the list I am, uh, this I generator here does not construct, construct a list, much like this way we do. So it's here at least. So you can see it has, a, it will have performance in memory space. It does not store all the items. Uh, another thing is that only useful purpose is, uh, only useful purpose is iteration. So the only useful purpose here you can see is um, when you want to do some kind of iteration is very useful. And once consumed cannot be reused. What does that mean? So I think I have uh, an example. Once consumed cannot be reused. Um, Okay, uh, I thought I have right. Okay, um, so let's continue. So here they made a good um, generator have lazy execution, producing items only when actual. For this reason, a generator is, is much more memory efficient than equivalent list comprehension. So this is um, why uh, generator expression is more efficient than list comprehension due to some of the stuff we mentioned, and also generator expression can be used as a function argument. So this can be used as a function argument. So what do you mean by that? Look at it here. We have a sum, which is basically a function in Python that some stuff, right? So when I have this guy, we say sum of numbers, maybe one, two, like this, right? So when I call this sum, oh, <laughs> uh, I do something, not this. Uh, so what I mean here is that, um, um, so here you can see the sum, right? But generator expression can be used as a argument for functions, right? So what this means that for X in my list, return X squared. So the first thing it will do is for X in my list, my, uh, my list return X squared. And for x in my list, the second one is return it. So this function will be summing the result that will be returned by this. Remember, this is iteration. It will return the first one, which is one. It will return the second one, which is four. It, so the generator, this, this sum will sum all the stuff. So here we know this. what this return is this. given this, uh, yeah, it's a generator, right? Um, but when we call, next in my list, Oh no. Yeah, so the first item is one, that is one square. The second item is, um, uh, okay, I'm, I'm running it in the same cell. So when we have this A, now when I say A, uh, the next item, it will be one. When I say the next, it will be nine, right? So all this that is returning one, nine, the sum will now be summing them one by one. So that's what they mean that um, this generator expression can be used as an argument to functions. So you can see this will give us a single number, right? It will give us a single number, right? Instead of you doing some kind of things as a, um, uh, uh, at one step. So here we can implement it in many ways, right? Um, so here also you can use it as a max, uh, finding the maximum of these numbers. So here you can see we sum all the numbers, but here we find the maximum among the numbers. So yeah. So yeah, anyone wants to add something? Uh, 
Isabel, <laughs> how is it going? <laughs> it's going. I, I think I get it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Tell you want to add something? Um, I don't really have anything, but I do like uh, that when you use a Jupyter Notebooks and you've got the, like, where you have the next parentheses, a parentheses, and you keep clicking it and it goes through the generator. I think that's a cool way to show what it's doing. Instead of if you just have like a flat file for code, you can't really see that as well. I mean, it's really interactive. So that's pretty yeah. neat. Yeah. Okay. Right. So cool. Thank you. So let's look at um, use of Python generators. So there are several reasons that makes um, generator this powerful, right? So one of the reasons is um, easy to implement, right? So let's look at this guy. So you can see this is a um, way you can implement um, some stuff. So here you can, generator can be implemented in a clear and concise way. So look at this guy, power two. So here we have um, mugs. Um, um, so here is a default value zero, but you remember when you um, substitute any value, it will override this. So here is default. Um, we have a, def, a function here, uh, we init, we initialize, um, n is zero and max is uh, max, right? And now we have iterator, which basically is uh, iterator, and uh, dunder iterator that will do iteration, dunder next, um, that will do next, right, in your stuff. And now here you can see we have result. Um, what it does is that given the number, given any number, right, um, what will happen is that we have two power self n, right? And if here, what we do, if self n is greater than this, raise this, meaning if you reach zero, that is, remember, if you reach the, the last item, then you don't have any item. So if self n is greater than zero, then read this error. But uh, what we have here is that uh, result is two by n, and you now um, have your uh, your n uh, increment increment the n. So basically, what it's doing here is power two, but we are implementing it using the uh, init iter and next, right? So this is a um, way to do that, but this is really um, um, ugly code in the sense that the above program was lengthy and confusing. But we, you can basically use this um, use generator to do this stuff because remember if we are using yield, if we are using yield keyword, these guys are being implemented automatically in yield, right? You don't need to implement them. So let's look at what will happen. Now power to generator, you only have you have your number. Now we initiate our n equals zero, while n is less than max, meaning if I input three. You can see it will iterate n is zero here. It will iterate yes, n is less than max, right? Uh, I now uh, increment n, so n will increment now until n is not less than that. Is, that means if n is three, for example, assume I have three here. So if I do the first one, I will increment because n is zero. I will increment one is less than three. Yes, two is less than three. Yes, three is less than three. No, so it will now terminate the loop, right? So now um, what this guy is saying, if while this is true, then yield this. So this yield, this is the keyword yield that implement the ITRA. So this means two by N, right? You do the power, now you increment it. So this function that we use using this yield is the same as this um, function. Why? Because these guys, they need to implement by hand this ITRA and next. But this yield implemented the ITA and next, and now you don't need to do all this stuff. So you can see since generator keep track of details automatically, the implementation was concise and much easier. So you can see here, we need to by hand say the next, you know, we need to call this I by hand, but yield implement everything, right? So this is uh, one way we can see that the iterator generator basically is a cool way to implement, right? Memory efficient. Um, I kept saying this. Um, one way actually was um, uh, uh, 
uh, a normal function return a sequence, right? In test sequence, right? Inside your memory, like what we saw in list, right? Um, this actually, if you have 1 million, as I give example, you will store those 1 million numbers in your memory, which is quite um, not uh, efficient. So generator uh, actually don't do that. Um, the return one item per time, uh, at a time, which is more memory efficient. Um, the talk about represent infinite stream. Uh, so infinite stream, what we mean by this is that um, uh, if you have a um, large number of file or anything large one, you can actually read it because, for example, you have file, one trillion file, right? So you can use like generators to um, read one by one to connect instead of to re read all everything at once. That is streaming. We know uh, maybe in data science, data stream, right? So it, when you say stream something stream, it comes uh, at a time at a chunk, at, you know, not uh, so generator from their name, as you can see, the stop go to the next, then, you know, so this function basically will read any infinite even number, right? All even number. So you can see that this is, um, yeah, you can do that efficiently, uh, yeah. So pipeline generators, um, so this is one thing also we will see it in a little bit, um, one example underscore about this pipeline. So what this is saying, multiple generators can be used to pipeline um, a series of operations. Um, so let's look at what will happen. Um, so you can see here we have a function that implement PyBanaiQ, right? So we use a yield X. We have a function that implement squared right so we use yield squared right and now what this guy means is that um, we can have this guy now pibonaki obtain and now squared again and now we have some here so what this is saying is that um, we can have nested um, generator from a pipeline that is what this Pabernike of 10 return, it, we will apply another squared, which is also a yield. Uh, we'll see a, a little bit of this example, uh, which may make this clear. But in essence, what they mean here is that uh, you can form a pipeline using generators. Um, so the next thing they discuss about the book, they didn't give quite uh, many examples, is what we call ITA tools. Um, Okay, I tattoos. So what this means, um, I tattoos is basically a library in um, Python that allows one to uh, do some stuff um, efficiently. Um, let's look at what we mean by that. So we can see here we have list and we have another list, right? Two lists. And we have a zip function in them, right? So let's look at this. So when I have this, now I have an object, zip, right? I have an object zip. This zip is what we call um, iterator. So when I put this, say list on this, Let's look at what will happen. You can see it, right? So what this is mean is that functions in ITA to operate on iterators to produce more complex results. List is iterator. This is iterator. When we say something is iterator, it means you can iterate over it, like list, tofu string, they are all iterator, meaning you can iterate from one, two, three, you can iterate over them, they are all iterators. So now, iter tools, these are iter tools, these kind of functions. They operate on iterators. Now, what is happening is that, okay, I have the, uh, the, um, the 
uh, explanation before uh, here. How exactly what is happening here? This guy and this guy, like all this, are iterable. So this is iterable, which means they can return their element one at a time, right? These are called iterable. Technically, any Python object that implement the iter and get iter method is iterable. So like tofu, like they are all iterable. So what we mean here is that, okay, yeah, let's look at this. So we have a function called iter. This is a list. Now, when I call here, iter here, you can see it returns an iterator object, right? So when I call this again here, a tofu, you can see it return iter iterator. This is a range. You can see it's an iterator. So all this, even a string, when you have a string, I think, yeah, a string. Uh, it's iterator. Uh, maybe a string, let me see. Um, hello, for example, iter. Yeah, you can see it's iter. So anything that we can iterate, because this is a list, we can iterate over it. We can print H, H E, L, L, O, R, O, one by one, right? We can iterate. So these are called iterator. Now, these kind of functions called zip, they are called iter tools. Now they can iterate over this. So now let's look at what happened. What happened now? Um, yeah, so uh, here, this is the explanation I wanna uh, show. Under the hood, the zip function works in Xn by calling ita on each of its argument. So what happened is this: this zip function call ita on each of these argument. You remember the ita? Um, if something is iterable, it has this method. Uh, it has the method um, ita and get item. Right, the next one. So when it calls the method on this first list, it will call on the another one. Right. Now it will zip, it will put them together. So therefore this and this one are put together. Can we see that? Now it goes to the next item. Here in this list, which one is the next? It's two. Here, which one is the next? It's B. It will put them in here. Here is the next. So more or less that we saw calling next to it give us to the next item. Therefore, iterators, um, iter tools are doing the same thing. So this is um, what I want to show here. Um, by calling ita on each object, then advancing each iterator returned by ita with next and aggregating the result into tuples. The ita tool, the ita uh, iterator returned by zip iterate over this tuple. So you can see this is, um, um, I don't know if one want to explain something better or ask question. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's understood. Uh, Isabel Taylor, you want to add something or it's confusing again? <laughs> No, I don't have anything to add. Me neither. Okay. Yeah, so that's um, what happened. So let's look at another example, right? Um, so here we have um, length, we have these guys. So you can see here we have another function called map. Now map is also an iterator. Yeah, uh, iter tools, right? Yeah, iter tools or whatever. Now, what means is that it will map this function to next item, right? To find the length of this. It will now use the next, because this map is iter tool, it has next implemented in it. Now it will map, take this guy and map to this guy. So now let's look at what will happen here. Can you see that? Um, so it will, length of this guy is three, length of this guy is two. So this, um, if we remove this, this will return uh, uh, I object um, generator, right? Because this is um, iterated, right? But remember, we said this whole, because they are generated, they hold only the first and last item. So you will not see them here. So if you want to see them here in full, we can call list. Or if you want to see them in tuple, we can call tuple on this return generator here and now we can see that it returns a generate uh, list here so we can see here as well most like the fun math function works by calling ita on its second argument 
advancing the iterator with the next. You can see it because map is iterator, it has both the iter function and the next function. I will say in, in generator. So the iter will call the next and it will now uh, map this uh, next to call the next item. So this is basically uh, what is this guy is doing. Um, this is another example. Okay, this is something that uh, I saw somewhere else. Historical note um, in Python to zip, um, the built in zip and map function do not return an iterator, but rather a list. So, this is something one should know. Um, the last one here, I have a sequence of numbers. So, here is the uh, we can see here we have a um, uh, function here that actually uh, we generated that actually create a list of numbers uh, using yields. And uh, uh, we create the function events that create even numbers. And now we say events is even. We create an object generator events. Now you can see I say for in a range, next events. So it will give me the list of even. I can also create an odd numbers here most like most the same the same thing um i create here an object uh, this is a function called odd that create an odd number remember here uh, it start with one and now advance by two which give me an odd number right so now here i use odd odds so odd here is an object that i created which is um generator now i say for so here in python if you don't have anything you can just put underscore so it mean you uh, it's not something that you care about it's still the something so for uh, any number in range, the first one return the next odd, right? So this is basically um, calculating the odd numbers, but there is um, uh, something uh, called from ITER tools that implement this, which is called counts. So what this is mean, import ITER tool as IT. So I import ITER tool, um, counter is IT.count. So this is a method and now create an object counter. So you can see here, we have a code that do this addition whatsoever. So now here for i in range counter, uh, return a list, it will return the list of items um, from the range of five. I have range of five from zero to one. Um, but this guy counter start from zero. Uh, uh, we can also implement counter with a step. It means it will count with a step. So here we say count uh, step of two. It means it will turn even number. Right, so it means uh, it will turn the even number. The counter it has some argument like step and whatsoever. It also have a step. Uh, we can turn an odd number here with step of two. So finally, the he made mention a lot of ITER tools, uh, which here uh, the book does not explain. I just picked like count here to show what this means. So um, these are some of the function uh, ITER tools we will see in Python. They are basically a uh, efficient way to implement. Uh, this kind of uh, lengthy stuff in Python. All right. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, uh, Great job. <laughs> thank um, you so much. Yeah. So um, um, we have a next chapter. Who is ready to present that? I was thinking of signing up. I could yeah, like, you can do it. <laughs> I can try. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Next week, you're going to present uh, the next chapter, right? Okay. <laughs> I'll sign up. Okay. Thank yeah, you. okay. Any questions? No, thanks so much. All right. So we see you next week. Uh, thank you for joining, Chela. Thank you, Isabel. See you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for you. presenting. Okay, Bye. thanks.